How's it going everyone? So another Scam Sam update. This one is of the best kind because number one, it's rapid fire. Number two, it is hilarious. It has to do, of course, with money. Scam Sam wants more access to money he's got somewhere stashed. Also, I'm going to talk about the judge themselves, why it seems a little fishy. And Scam Sam got some hilarious advice from another scammer, a very famous scammer, aka Pharma Bro, who did go to jail. I'll save that for the end. Apparently this week, Thursday to be exact, he asked the judge to allow him to access close to $500 million. <laughs> Here's the stupid part. He says it's because he needs the money to pay his legal fees. Now, of course, he asked the judge this stuff through his lawyer. So it is pretty bizarro. And where is this money sitting? It's actually $465 million worth of shares from Robinhood. So it's all just weird weird bizarro stuff attorneys for bankman made the request in a motion filed thursday arguing that his 56.3 million shares of robin hood actually owned through an entity that is not party to the proceedings in terms of the ftx collapse of course the obviousness here is that he used money obtained from ftx and alameda to buy the damn shares it's ridiculous the gall the balls of not only the attorneys but also of sbf and his family to ask for this so supposedly scam sam once worth 15.6 billion dollars or 16 depending on where or how you look at it he said he only has about 100k in cash and we all know that's just plain old pleaded not guilty to all the crazy charges he has concerning fraud and conspiracy. The motion filed, okay, it actually states Bankman Freed requires some of these funds to pay for his criminal defense, okay, $465 million. Well, if they're going to pay the judge and some of the jurors, of course, you know, that, that's going to be very useful. I'll purchase you a, a few not guilties, right? So here's the obnoxious part. They argue, okay, the, his lawyers, SBF's lawyers, they argue that it's actually owned by a company called Emergent Fidelity Technology. It's a company, basically a shell company, that is controlled by, of course, SBF. And here's the kicker. Where the hell did he get all that money from? <laughs> I mean, it's laughable. Of course, the lawyers want to get their money. They want to get their cut, whether he goes to jail or not. But at this point, it seems like Scam Sam is going to be let off easy. At least that's what I'm going to suspect. <laughs> Mind boggling. Mind boggling. If the judge allows that, it's, the fix is in. Game over for anyone or everyone if they ever think Scam Sam will get any kind of justice, or at least those who he scammed. Now here's the bizarre part. The motion does acknowledge that for practical purposes, this actually could just be straight up rejected. This week though, the US prosecutors did confirm that those actual Robin Hood shares are all in the process of being seized. Even though that kind of sounds like good news, it's not. The reason why is because the DOJ, the Department of Justice, those bastards did not believe the 56 million shares of Robin Hood worth $465 million or property of a bankruptcy estate. What does that mean? It means that the U.S. attorney overseeing this told the U.S. bankruptcy judge who is overseeing the FTX bankruptcy. They're basically saying this is not part of the proceeding. Therefore, SBF's lawyers could use that as an argument, okay, to cash out that money because the DOJ is essentially saying, hey, it's not part of the FTX collapse. As if it makes any sense that Scam Sam could afford $465 million worth of Robinhood shares if it wasn't for the damn FTX. Money being stolen. But it gets more complicated. The reason why is because a bunch of crypto firms are bankrupt. A few liquidators in the Bahamas and even BlockFi, who's broke as hell, have laid claim to those Robinhood shares. So all of them are going to be competing together to get a piece of that pie. Of course, Scam Sam pleaded not guilty this week to counts of wire fraud conspiracy. Did say though, he did acknowledge that there were risk management failures at FTX. Oh, he's sorry. Remember that. Very sorry, guys. Okay. But anyway, he said he did not believe he was criminally liable. What an asset. Here's the part. Bankman Freed purchased 7.42% of Robinhood stock, okay, 
through the Emergent Fidelity Tech, his company, using funds borrowed from <laughs> Alameda Research. That's all according to the affidavit he filed in December in an Antigua court. Pretty crazy. It was disclosed that Emergent Fidelity Tech, this company that he used to buy these Robinhood shares, was owned 90% by SBF and 10% by Gary Wang. The other FTX guy who pleaded guilty along with Caroline Ellison. They're trying to cooperate with the prosecutors, cut some deals, get some leniency. We'll see if that actually happens. So in the end, the judges basically are saying that Robinhood shares are subject essentially to litigation. They're going to fight it out for 465 mil. It does get a little tricky though. BlockFi suing Emergent in a bid to seize the Robinhood stock, okay, which was pledged, supposedly pledged by Alameda, obviously via SPF by Alameda as collateral to guarantee a repayment of a loan made by BlockFi. So BlockFi gave them a loan. <laughs> they turned around, they bought stock, and then BlockFi is out of, basically out of luck. They're out of luck. The drama continues. Okay, on to the fishy stuff about the judge. Why, why this judge? Well, the first judge did recuse herself, okay? She had a conflict of interest, and despite the conflict of interest, she allowed SBF to spend the holidays, right, at his parents' house in California, nice cushy house arrest, fly first class, of course, only the best for Scam Sam. Then she recuses herself because her husband, he's a lawyer, and he did some consultancy work with FTX right before the collapse. Wow, what a coincidence. Gee, I wonder. Conflict of interest, anyone? Despite all that, despite the conflict of interest, she still did not recuse herself until after SBF was released. So then she leaves. Here's the crazy part. She's gone. The next judge, Lewis Kaplan. Nice fellow, nice looking gentleman. This guy, who was appointed by Clinton, so he's been around a while, he allows those two names that are attached to the bail to remain a secret for whatever reason this is this is bizarro that to me is a little suspicious on top of that the south district of new york where the whole prosecution case is taking place damian williams the prosecutor now it gets a little weird damian williams was appointed by the president right to the sdny in the south district of new york in 2021 so he worked for john Kerry's campaign 2004 that's no big deal but the point is he attended yale and then he was also supported by the paul and daisy soros fellowship for new americans what does that mean <laughs> well williams is also or was also a law clerk for merrick garland what are the odds that all these connections right of people overlapping and as we know sbf threw down a bunch of money to a lot of very well connected politicians so it does it does smell a little fishy he threw down money to left, right, whoever, whoever would take the money. And of course, politicians will take money from wherever. Pharma Bro has some awesome advice. Martin Shkreli, he has advice for our favorite disgraced founder, Scam Sam, for him some survival tips, okay, for jail. <laughs> because of course, Pharma Bro is an ex-con now. Pharma Bro was released this year. Now he's like 39 years old. He, <laughs> he says that his advice sounds a little funny, but claims that it could mean life or death. So here's the link if you want to check it out. It is with crypto journalist Laura, Sh Laura Shin on her podcast, Unchained. So Farmer Bro says, Sam is not exactly going to be somebody who fits into the prison system, of course, right? So his advice includes for Scam Sam to shave his head, also to deepen his voice, right? So he says that Scam Sam is going to have a lot of issues because he's a bit of an effeminate guy and his demeanor, some people say autistic sort of sense or sensibility is not not something that goes well in prison, obviously. He doesn't want him to become someone's, you know, girlfriend. Farmer Bro continues. He says, if he doesn't know anything about the streets or sort of a criminal culture, my advice to him would be to pick those things up as quickly as possible. He should also be listening to get this rap music <laughs> as much as possible. So he should be trying to learn everything there is to know about gangs and tough neighborhoods. It could save his life, Scam Sam's life. That's pretty funny. Apparently he thinks he should rebrand himself, you know, reinvent himself into some kind of a tough guy. I don't think that 
can happen. According to Farmer Bro, he should be lying, telling people he's from Oakland, right? So maybe, I don't know, maybe Farmer Bro is making some good points there. I mean, now if you don't know who Farmer Bro is, he went to jail for securities fraud in 2017. He was really a bad guy. He drastically hiked prices of an EpiPen, particular, uh, basically life-saving drugs and jacked them up a thousand percent or something crazy. So something that was like a dollar or five dollars all of a sudden went to a thousand dollars or five thousand dollars. And these people would need these drugs to survive. He himself was a bit of a scammer, you know, in some ways or another. Bit of a jerk, but eh, hey, who am I to judge, right? Hey, we'll see what happens. So that's it for this update, guys. Thanks for watching. Smash the like if you haven't. Please do subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.